Hey guys, still here and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Today we have some, well, really old ships relative to what we have been going on with the game so far. We have the new additions of the USS Monitor and the CSS Virginia. Now this is a Confederate ship and that means that it was used during the American Civil War as indicated. What we have is two new missions called First Turrets and First Casemates. I'm going to go with the First Turrets and build the USS Monitor. Now these are ironclad, so they are of a vastly different design than what I have shown you so far in the videos on this game. And it's going to be very interesting to see what exactly these kinds of battles are going to look like. I'm going to build an ironclad for a measly $600,000, and the enemy is going to also have one ironclad. I can have four different kinds of bonuses, armor, firepower, speed, or funding. This is going to give me gun range and shell pen. Uh, this is more resistance, better hull form. Um... A bit less armor weight, which could be important. I'm not sure how much speed is going to really help me. Because I don't think that getting into range is going to benefit me too much. Sure enough, it might allow me to dictate the speed and the pace of the battle. But aside from that, I don't really see how this is going to benefit. And more funds is going to get me an additional 300,000. Let's go for firepower. Right. There's not a whole lot <laughs> that I can upgrade about this ship. Uh, this has a full speed of six and a half knots, blisteringly quick. I can displace a maximum of 1600 tons, although that does take up a fair amount of my budget already. I'm having medium range, which I cannot adjust, and let's go for maximum bulkheads. Steam engines, <laughs> period, <laughs> I cannot adjust this. Coal, cannot adjust, and natural boilers. Um, armor, barbettes, anti-torpedoes, hull bottom, bulkheads, flooding, citadels, none of this can be adjusted. Interestingly, it does look like I can have torpedoes. E no. It is sort of available, but then when I click on it, it's just grayed out. So I don't think I'm going to be able to have torpedoes on this ship. Alright, let's go with what I can get. Uh, this is the <laughs> forward armored post. Right, okay. Uh, secondary tower, rear armored post, is going to give me a plus one aiming speed, plus one base accuracy, a bit of damage control, and torpedo spotting, although I really believe torpedo spotting is not going to be that big of a threat. Funnels, we have big funnels and standard funnels. Oh, those are interesting. <laughs> and naturally, you can rotate them if you want to. Press R to rotate your, ob your objects, whatever you're placing down. What sort of main guns do I have? 9 inch, 10 inch, 11 inch, or 12 inch? Double barrel 12 inch. And of course you have the American flag on every single tower because US. Now the firing angles are only a little <laughs> obstructed when I place it down like that. Uh, interestingly, I can face this thing forward. In which case, it would have vastly better firing arcs. So, yeah, okay, let's do that. Hold on, how much does that thing actually rotate? See, these I have facing forward, but these I'm not too sure about. I can have them, I can have them pointing to the side, but not the rear. Hold on. If I put the turret down first, maybe that's going to help. And then see if I can fit the secondary... No. Oh, this is actually decent. This is actually decent. Okay. Then, funnels. Since I don't think I can add any more turrets. Oh, I can. Can you also place these things off-center? No. Unfortunately not. Oh, I'm already above budget. Haha. <laughs> Right, maybe 12 inch is a bit too big. Let's first install the funnels to make sure I can actually move this ship. And then the guns. I have a displacement left of oh, not too much. This one thing is 239 tons. This is 185. Reloads in 75 seconds. Whoa, all right. And she's overweight again. Oh, I can actually have enhanced gun reloads. That's quite nice. And pro <laughs> The thing is, they're too heavy. These are the double barrel. 
What if I go for single barrel 10 inch? Still overweight. Come on. Am I too fast? You really cannot put anything on these ships. Uh, deck armor, I don't think it's going to be very important. The thing basically doesn't have a deck. Oh, there we go. If I have half an <laughs> if I have half an inch of deck armor, I'm going to be able to field this ship with uh, one 10 inch gun per turret. Oh yeah, here we go. Four weight offset, 2.7, five six. No, sorry, I need to move the rear turret back there. Okay, she's ready to go. Six and a half knots, full speed ahead. Let's get going. One ironclad versus one ironclad from the Spanish Empire, no less. Oh, hello. Range 700 meters out. <laughs> oh, this is epic. The whole turret slowly turning around. What do we have here? That's a completely different design. That's a very, very slanted armor. I'm not sure if I'm going to be bouncing off of that or not. Penetration chance. Look at that. This thing actually has 9-inch guns. Like, cannons. Oh, wow. What is my pen chance on this ship? You can usually just zoom out a bit and then click your own ship. And there we go. 12%. Oh, wow. Uh, this battle is probably going to take a fair amount of time. 12% chance to pen. Reloads in 45 seconds. Oh, that's actually pretty respectable for a 10-inch gun. There we go. The first damaging hit has been scored. 3.2 damage. I have only 167 shells available. Oof. Oh, nice one. Destroy a funnel. Oh, shit. That was on my ship. Not theirs. Pan chance is a whole 13% now. Hold on to your horses. Here we go. The Kear Sarge is ablaze. Hopefully I can put that out because that does not seem like a very healthy state for the ship to be in. Structural integrity for that one, for the Manuela, is down to 96. Kearsarge is down to 98. Fan chance, 13%. And we're burning up again. I think those maximum bulkheads might come in useful right about now. 0.7 damage. <laughs> Love it. Alright, uh, oh, I cannot go any faster than 0.3, or times 3. Damage to the main tower. Look at the impact, though. Bloody hell. It does look like the Kearsarge is bouncing most of the damage so far. Manuela is on fire again. This one has few bulkheads. I think those fires might cause a bit more damage to her than to me. Look at all those shells just bouncing off of the, of the Kearsarge. What sort of speed am I at? I'm doing three knots. Uh, increase speed to 4 just to make sure I can keep the platform as stable as possible target slow speed you don't say this thing can do a whopping 9.5 knots though that's actually 50% faster than my ship if it can still get up to that speed which it might not be able to since it has taken on a load of water and is utterly unable to fix that Okay, maybe the battle's going to end a bit faster than I'd expected. <laughs> this is a fantastic new little update. I think they added this as a sort of April Fool's joke, but I think it's great. I hope this is going to stay in the game, not just be some sort of early April Fool's thing and then half April the update disappears or gets rolled back. They also improved a bunch of other stuff. Um, I saw updates for gun calibers, or, um, <coughs> oh, wow. Um, well, not so much gun calibers, maybe, but uh, I think it was gun noises, uh, firing arcs, stuff like that has all been adjusted. I still need to take a couple of pictures of these ships before they actually go down. <laughs> because this is 
going to be over very, very soon. I think she's about to sink. Yeah, she sunk. The whole battle took 10 minutes. Wow, that was very fast. Very, very fast indeed. Mission complete. Okay, let's do the other one. First casemates, CSS Virginia. Virginia was the first ironclad of the Confederate Army and represented the basis of similar casemate ironclads that were widely used in the American Civil War. Having its armament in fixed gun ports instead of armored turrets, the casemate ironclad is considered the intermediate stage between the traditional broadside frigate and the modern warships. You can design a similar ship and fight versus two monitor ironclads, that's the one I just built, that are considerably smaller but are armed with heavy gun turrets. Okay. I don't really think, again, that speed's going to help me here. Armor. Mm. Yeah, let's go with armor because they're supposedly armed with significantly heavy gun turrets. Okay, the ironclad, Virginia. What can I put on here? No torpedo launchers. <laughs> that would have been fun. Forward observation post. Over here. And then a secondary post over there. Funnel. I already have a four weight offset, really? No, I want to keep that thing somewhere in the middle. Barbettes? <laughs> I don't think so, Sunshine. I don't have any barbettes. I do have main guns of 9 and 10 inch caliber. Uh, my speed's 8 knots. And can go up to a whopping ten and a half. This whoa, this thing can actually get quite large. Four and yeah, forty nine hundred tons. Explosive? No, black powder only. Standard ammo. I can go for heavy shells though. Additional shell pen. Torpedoes are not a thing. Enhanced gun reload speed. And turrets. Well, I don't have any turrets, so I don't think I'm going to need those particularly much. I also have casemate guns. So those are the casemates. Then where are my main guns? Where do those go? Oh! In the bow and the stern? What? Hold on. So my bow and my stern guns are the ones that are going to do actual damage. Hold on. Do I even need main guns? Yeah, at least one needed. All right. One on the bow, and then eight inch on the casemates. <laughs> Ship is overweight. All right, I'll slow it down a bit. I'll slow her down a bit. Down to seven knots. Uh, we have a four weight offset of 37.2%. Okay, let's switch that main gun back to nine inch. Put another nine inch on the stern. I still have a massive four weight offset. Why though? What is so heavy on the bow? Is it these guns? Yeah, it was those guns. Okay. Uh, these are all eight inch casemates. So I don't really know what else to shift backwards because this tower probably doesn't weigh anything. 15 tons. <laughs> okay, armor then. Um, belt armor is going to be king here. Let's say that they're firing with the biggest guns that I can field, which is going to mean that at 1,000 meter range, they'll penetrate 3.4 inches of armor. I already have 8 inch belt armor. I don't see them penetrating the belt of this ship at all, actually. 7.5? Uh, turret top. Not a thing. Oh, actually, it is a thing. But I don't have any turrets. Secondaries. These are considered as secondaries, so I might need to armor them up. Uh, yeah, oh, almost got to 7 inch there. Okay, so the turret top does do something, because it just brought my budget, or my weight limit down a bit. Okay, <laughs> this is going to be hilarious. Field it. Two ironclads versus the Real Familia. Sorry, the Real Familia. Because I think we're a Spanish ship today. 
Oh, sorry, no. We're the Confederate ship, of course. Uh, this thing only has one double turret. Forward observation post, aft observation post. Identification should go very, very quick because I'm so close. There we go. Jump from 46 to 55. 65. 75. 85. Jesus, where was that shell supposed to go? Minimum bulkheads. 12-inch guns. They reload in 83 seconds. Alright, so right now I can only fire with my 9-inch uh, bow gun. I think the 8-inch guns might actually prove a little bit more effective here. What can this pen, though? This can pen at a range of 1,000 meters, and I'm already below that. It can pen 4.9 inches of armor. Belt armor, that is. This ship has a lot more than that. So let's see if I can bounce everything. I do only have standard bulkheads, so that might be a weakness. That might cause the ship to start burning out. We'll see how it goes. Come on, turn. Eventually. The 9-inch can still fire. That's surprising. The 8-inch are being trained on the enemy. But the ship is sort of refusing to turn. Rudder port maximum. Penetration, almost 10%. This thing almost has 10.3 inches of armor at the best. Holy shit, son. Come on. Turn. Range, 400 meters. <laughs> Turn. I need those guns. I want the secondaries to hit. Ooh, damage to the case, mate. What sort of blistering speed are these things going at? 5.7 knots, how am I supposed to catch up to that? And why are my 8-inch guns not firing? I get that the 9-inch aren't firing because they don't have the firing angles. But the other ones should. <coughs> Come on. Turn, 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 turn. 200 meters out. Ow. Uh, main guns, shifts, all right click. 200 meters out. It's almost like the Real Familia is not even moving anymore. 34% chance to hit. Although the Scranton... Oh, the Scranton is a different design. Dual turrets. 12 inch. Less armor, few bulkheads. 44% chance to hit, but only the bow turret can actually do something, because the stern doesn't want to turn too much. Hello, could you kindly move? Oh, here we go. Penetration. No, sorry, fractured armor, partial pen. And I get it right back. Another two. Pen chance is almost 11%. Maybe I should have the uh, Real turn to starboard instead. Because the Minnesota seems to be intent on going to my port side. Which is fine, because then I'll get try and get the port guns to fire. That was point blank, 200 meters with a 12 inch gun, and it ricocheted. Your pen chance is not great. Not against all that belt armor that I have. Secondaries, please. There we go. That's at least one of the secondaries. I wonder if my secondaries are going to be able to do damage against that thing, though. Chance to hit, 100. Well, it calls to fire. Minimum bulkheads. Let's try and burn it down then, I guess. Whoa, not bad. More fires, damage to the main gun.
And I think that the Minnesota is not quite keep keeping up with the turret. The turret might not be able to turn fast enough. Nope, it is. It definitely is. But once again, it bounced off the Real. <laughs> These ships. Oh, I love it. It looks great. Yep, another fracture. The Scranton doesn't seem to be terribly interested in this fight. It's just observing, seemingly, what the Minnesota and myself are doing. Can I have the secondaries fire at the Scranton, mayhaps? Not that I'm likely to hit it. But uh, currently, they cannot hit the Minnesota anyway. More damage to the main gun. I wonder how much turret armor might be a little underwhelming. Now, the ship itself does seem like it took a couple of big impacts over here, for example. But I believe the guns are all operational. That was definitely a hit to a secondary, but it's still there. Sure enough, it's been damaged. It's classed as damage. But it's operational. The port flank also took a big hit. I think that used to be a secondary. Close, but it's still firing. Minnesota, 91. Scranton, 100. Engaging two ships at the same time. Minnesota taking very little damage again. Four and a half. We got one penetrating hit. Bow. Bow deck extended. Which is actually a bit weird. Because I thought that deck armor usually only gets penetrated when you're firing at greater range, when you're plunging fire. I'm really at point blank range, I shouldn't have plunging fire. So how am I penetrating the deck on these ships? See, it does seem to hit mostly the, the belt armor. Damage to main gun, again. I'm not surprised, because the main gun is really the only part of the, well, if you want to call it superstructure. It's the only thing that I can hit. There's just not that much to shoot at. Another slightly damaging episode. Chance to pen? 12.9. I'll take it. more damage, again, to the main gun. I wonder if we're going to be able to knock out this turret. I wonder when the second turret is going to join that fight as well. It doesn't seem to want to turn. Seems like it could be a design flaw. Now, I do have to start turning. <coughs> this thing is so long that it really doesn't want to turn very well. So, I have to plan my turn well in advance. In multiple locations. Damn, the whole ship's burning up. Look at that. Stem to stern. Few bulkheads. I think they're regretting that design choice right now. They do seem to have put a couple of the fires out, but I think more fires are taking hold of the ship. Especially below this. Another fire set. The Scranton is going down quick for their structural... Surely based on the fires that it's doing. More fires and flooding and the rudder's damaged. Oh, she definitely didn't like that one. Engine damaged. Fire. Fifteen point five percent chance to pen. More fire. These damage control parties are very effective getting rid of all the water, though. Look at that, the buoyancy is coming right back. And going right back down with another flooding pen. 38. 38, 37, they're fighting it. Effectively as well. That tip to the effectiveness of the damage control party on the Scranton. The fire, however doing most of the damage. There's another penetrating hit. And another fire. Where's the parcel pen? No, that was a definite pen. Once again, they're pumping the water out. 
And once again, I get another pen. This time around on the bow, it seems. Floodability, or sorry, buoyancy is going down quick. Once again, they're fighting it. 16, 20. They got some amazing pumps on these ships. Because I've had plenty of fights where my ships were definitely not able to take out that much water off the ship that quick. The Scranton is perfectly capable of doing it. More flooding, and there goes the Scranton. Right, so now I have to do the same thing to the Minnesota. Um, I wish I could do this at times five, because this is going to take forever. Minnesota speed, 5.6 knots. But unfortunately, all of those secondaries of mine currently cannot fire. So I'm going to have to go all the way to the starboard and try to get those secondaries to once again open up on that ship. Geez, Scranton sunk really quick. Is that the last of her? Oh, it's just one lifeboat. Doesn't look like any survivors, though. I don't think I've ever actively observed a single lifeboat in this game. Is that a new feature? I have just never paid attention to that. Ah, we've got another 8-inch firing. Accuracy 15%. My chance to hit the Minnesota at a range of what? One click? Yeah, one click or not great. Well, he says, and he promptly gets a hit. The Real Familia is still at 98%. It is not hard to starboard. Maintain that turn. I should have an increasing number of 8-inch secondaries, if you want to call them that. 8-inch broadside guns ready to fire on the Minnesota. The chance to pen is dreadful, so I'm going to have to once again rely on fires. And the Minnesota actually has even fewer bulkheads as compared to the uh, Scranton that it just sunk. Minnesota down to 90%. The hits are all very, very, well, low damage. 3.5, 4.5, 4. There's a 6. I got an 8.7 from an 8-inch gun. Even with an extended deck armor. Again, with the extended deck armor. There we go. Uh... Just a head straight. Minnesota? Is she turning the port? No, she's not. Alright. Maintain a parallel course and give the 8 inch some time to work. Unfortunately, my 9 inch no longer work. No firing angle. So it's just 4... Potentially 5 broadside guns. 8 inch. Might be able to turn slightly in towards her and get closer. What's her speed again? 5.7 versus my, <laughs> my 3.7. I'm still trying to get up to 5.5 knots. Hold on, is the gun destroyed? No, it's not. It's just heavily damaged. There, she still fires. Damage to the funnel. That might kill engine efficiency. Or at least reduce it. Real's now closing in. Range. Only 700 meters out. Accuracy on the 8 inch guns is increasing with every meter I get closer. 39% cha chance to hit. Hit. Bounce. Get ready. Range. 600 meters. Could we kindly fire? Come on, at least one of those 8-inch must be able to fire. No? What the hell? The 8-inch are just refusing to fire all of a sudden. It's not the first time either that I've had this happen. I've had a couple of warships in several of my videos just be ready to fire and then completely refuse to. Like now. The ship is capable of doing 59%, or has a 59% chance to hit. Although, sure enough, the bow gun and the stern gun are not actual in a position to fire. The secondaries have a 71% chance to hit. And they don't do anything. Have you tried turning the ship on and off again? 
Because this is really not doing anything. How the hell am I supposed to win this fight then? If my ship refuses to fire. Chance to hit? 100. So it's a guaranteed hit? 10. Not that likely. I'm still not getting damaged by uh, the Minnesota. Come on. Shoot. Seriously, the 9-inch should be firing every 35 seconds. The 8-inch should be firing every 30 seconds. What is wrong with these guns? More damage to the casemate. I have plenty of ammo left either, too, so th that's not it either. Alright, in that case, that leaves me with one option. Use the ship as a weapon. If I can get up to speed fast enough. Which I kind of doubt. Because the AL Familia... Oh, I'm firing again? What the hell? What? Why? Ow. Why am I suddenly firing again? What changed? Because I did nothing with the controls. I did nothing... Oh, shit. I did nothing with the maneuvers. I don't get this. I think this is still a bug in the game. Now we have another 11 minutes to sink the Minnesota. <clears throat> so it's down to the port side battery. So quickly start setting fires and burn this ship down. Otherwise, we won't win this fight in time. Come on, 8 inch. There she goes. Rudder to port maximum. Speed. Well, I'm basically dead in the water at 0. 0.6 knots. Couple of hits, but nothing serious. The fires are doing most of the damage here. She's burning up fast. Come on, adding to that. I have to just try and get a turn, but this thing is turning faster than I can. Just the ironclad is so long. Structural integrity 68%, 67, 66. 1, 2, 3. No, it's hard to figure out how many fires are going because they keep spreading and getting put out. We're all down to 94. Already having sunk one of these monitors. I think it's going to get really close with the time, though. Nice! Flooding! That could sink her very quick. 37. Buoyancy dropped to 40%. Structural integrity to 40, but they're fighting it. Jeez, you really only need one or two good hits on those monitors and they just disappear. Structural down 26, floatability, slash buoyancy 38. Structural 23, 22. Ooh. 21. Come on. Put her down. We got five minutes left in this fight. Damage secondary and sorry, secondary tower, and I took a fire. Fire's out. The Minnesota, however, is still burning. Both engines are out. Minnesota's reduced to 0.7 knots. Another fire set on the Minnesota. I'm still half and half expecting to see an ammo detonation. What's my speed? 2.4. I need to try and get this turn as close as possible. Three and a half minutes left. Come on, we need a flooding hit. Three minutes left. I can fire about five more salvos before time runs out. No! You're all missing! For some reason, the 9-inch... Oh, the 9-inch is out of firing arc. Okay, that makes sense. Minnesota. 14%. Damage to the main tower. Destroyed the main tower, in fact. Structural to 12. 10. 90 seconds left. Oh, we're gonna need more. 90 seconds. Structural to 5. 
four. Come on, burn. Two, one, 45 seconds. Point seven, point four, zero. With 20 seconds, well, 28 seconds left on the clock. Oh, that was close though. That was really, really close. Whew. These are fun missions. <laughs> they are very different from what you normally see in this game. The first casemates and the first turrets missions. Let me know what you think about these missions. I think they're great fun because they require some slightly different tactics and you just see very, very different numbers. But of course, your opinion might be vastly different. As always, the game is called Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts and you can find the link to it down below in the description. Um, I know that the price point is a bit steep or it can be steep because it is currently listed at, I think, $50 and you immediately do get access to this beta or sorry, alpha as it's called. But um, I think it's a really good game, which, well, with some bugs like guns not firing is still relatively stable. Anyway, that's my opinion. You have your own, of course. If you like the game, go get it through the link down below in the description, not an affiliate link. So uh, no, uh, <laughs> no money for me there in case you are concerned with that. And well, just have fun with it, especially in these times of quarantine. I think uh, a game like this can keep you occupied for a quite a long time. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you had fun with the ironclads and I shall see you again soon for new videos.